Hi, welcome to this installment of The Invisible Chef. On this very first installment, we're not interested in the foods yet. We're interested in what you need to set yourself up in order to be able to cook foods through the semester. Now, if this were a culinary class, I'd send you off to Sonoma Williams and make you pant over all the pots and pans and serving dishes and wonderful spoons and fancy gadgets they got at Sonoma Williams. But, no, I figure you're mostly college students who are on a simple budget and you need a simple setup. So today we're going to talk about a simple setup. Of course, the very first thing you're going to need when you cook is a pot and a pan. This for instance, is a small pot with a tight lid. The lid has to fit on it very well so that when you steam things, you steam things and you don't simply boil them. So you want to get one of these. Oh no, that's not true. You want to get a set of these. If you don't already have a small pot and a medium pot about this size and a large pot because you know sometimes you're going to want to cook some pasta. And then, even that isn't quite enough as I put these away, you'll need to get yourself a frying pan of some sort. Now this is a frying pan worthy of what we're doing in this semester. It's about a 12 inch frying pan and you can do all kinds of things in it. But you may be living on your own and if you're living on your own you're only fixing something for you and maybe a friend so instead of a 12 inch frying pan you might also want to have a very small six or seven inch frying pan these are wonderful for individual meals usually frying pans don't have lids that fit tightly on them but if you find one like that that makes things even better so let me put these away now once you have your frying pan set up, you need to start mixing up your food. And for that, you need to measure your food and you need to be able to put it in something and mix it up. So every kitchen, even the simplest kitchen, should have a measuring cup. This is a one cup measuring cup. It's a Pyrex cup. You can get them in plastic. You can get them in stainless steel. It doesn't really matter. I like these Pyrex ones because you can do a lot of things with them. And in addition to the one cup variety, you can get a two cup variety. That's nice. Or you could even go so far as to get yourself a nice four cup variety. The minimum is the one cup. Have a one cup measuring cup that you can measure out a quarter of a cup, a half a cup, three quarters of a cup, and you're good to go. So let me set these aside. Once you get your things measured out, you need to put them in something to mix them up. And so you'll need to get yourself a couple of mixing bowls. Now, these are Pyrex bowls. You can get them in plastic. You can get them in uh, ceramic and all kinds of other things. I like the uh, Pyrex ones just because I like the Pyrex ones. But make sure you have a large bowl and you have a medium bowl. And it would be nice to have a small bowl, except I have adult children who are about your age and one of them took it and it's in his condo now. I'll get that back eventually. But the mixing bowls are to get things together. In order to measure out the spices though, you're not going to measure out a half a cup of, of salt or a three quarters of a cup of pepper. You're going to need yourself a set of measuring spoons. Now everyone wants to tell you that a good chef doesn't need measuring spoons. They just put a dash of this and a dash of that in. Uh, yeah, that sounds good, but you know what? You're going to want measuring spoons. And so this one comes with, it's got an uh, eighth of a teaspoon, a quarter of a teaspoon, a half a teaspoon, and, and up to a tablespoon, and that's wonderful. This way you can keep control of what you're doing. Here's one I like. It sure looks like a shot glass to me, but if you'll notice, on the side it has lines, and the lines say, um, well, on that side it's milliliters, but on this side, half a tablespoon, a tablespoon, or one and a half tablespoons. It's great to measure out liquids in one of these little shot glasses with the lines on it. So, I'm going to set that aside. As you're getting your spices ready, you're going to sometimes need to do something with your spices. Let's say, for instance, that your recipe calls for pistachios. Oftentimes, what that means is the little inside part of the nut needs to be crushed up. And so you want to get yourself one of these. This is a grinder. Now there are lots of words for it. If you're Hispanic, you know you've got your own phrases for it, but uh, so on. But this is a place where you're going to 
grind up all of your different spices, especially saffron. Saffron comes in strands. It's very expensive. Don't use it as strands. Use it after you've ground it up in one of these. So a lot of spices need to be ground to be prepared for what you're about to do. Now this one is made out, out of stone, but you don't have to get one out of stone. There are all kinds of possibilities at the store. They don't have to be expensive. Ask your mom for one for your birthday. Then when you get ready to prepare, you're also going to need one of these. This is a cutting board. A cutting board is important because your mom doesn't like you cutting on her countertops. It messes up the countertop when you grind into it with a knife. Use a cutting board. It also keeps things sanitary as you go through. For instance, if you have two cutting boards, and this was purchased at Safeway. It's an inexpensive cutting board. If you have two cutting boards and you happen to be cutting chicken, you use one for the chicken and get another one for everything else. The idea is it eliminates concerns about salmonella and so on. But anyway, get yourself a nice, easy to clean cutting board. This one is nice and thick. It's, it's, we've been using it for years. See what you can do with that. When you mix all your stuff together, sometimes you need to drain it. And when you do, like when you're making rice, you'll see that soon in another video, or when you're making all kinds of vegetables and you chop them up, you need to strain them to get the water out. So make sure you have a strainer. Some people call them a colander. A colander is actually more of a fixed thing. This is a strainer. This is good enough. This one's a large size. It's about, oh, seven inches across, and it covers most everything. You can get them from very small to very, very large, but make sure you have something to be able to pour the rice into and let the water go away. Otherwise, you're going to have problems later on. So uh, a strainer of some sort is very important to every kitchen. Then. When you go to finally put things together and cook them, you need cooking dishes. Sometimes you need to bake things. Of course, a cookie sheet, and you, I'm assuming you all know what a cookie sheet is, is one thing. But if you have to have sauce around the thing you're cooking, you need a deeper dish. Sometimes when you're making pastries and so on. Now, they come in different sizes as well. This is a six by nine dish. So it's actually kind of small. It's perfect for a person who's living on his or her own. It's not so perfect for when you're baking one of those cake mixes that call for a 9 by 11 uh, uh, baking dish, but if you have two or three different sizes, you can make enough for two people or enough for four people or enough for your family as you go. This again is made out of Pyrex, but they come out, made out of all kinds of different materials and you can use them in the oven. Put it in the oven. You don't necessarily have to have a top because you can always use aluminum foil, but you need something that will withstand the heat of the oven. Which brings me to a concern I have. Remember those pots and pans that I told you about? One time I have one of those pots and pans and you need to have pots and pans that are oven safe. I had put it in the oven and was baking what I was baking and reached in and without thinking much grabbed hold of the handle. Not a good idea. If you're going to do that, you need one of these. This is a pot holder. I had severe burns on my hands for a goodly long time. These are very inexpensive at Ross. You can pick one up for probably a buck and a half, and it is going to save you a lot of blisters. So get a couple of these if you can. And then in addition to these, you need these. This is a towel, a dish towel. Here's the trick. You need sometimes to wash your pots and your pans and your bowls as you're going along. You've used it once, you need to use it again, so you wash it real quickly. You need to try it out because wet doesn't always work for a dish. So get yourself a couple of decent uh, towels. I think we bought these for $2.99 for two of them. So pretty inexpensive all the way around at home goods or any place like that. But then in addition to that, you do need to make sure you have these. This is paper towels. Paper towels are what you use to clean up as you go along. If you're making a big fancy meal and you're making a big fancy mess, clean up that mess as you go. Not because everybody else is looking at the mess, but because it gets very difficult to keep control of your kitchen when everything starts to spin out of control. You do need to get into the habit of cleaning everything up when you are 
um, peeling cucumbers or potatoes, you need to be able to throw those away. When you cut onions up, you chop them up, throw the skins away. When you have a calendar, it's a little messy, wipe it down. I like to use Windex because I watched the movie at My Big Fat Greek Wedding and yeah, Windex works for everything. So get a little Windex, get some paper towels and clean it all up. That's a good thing. You're going to need some utensils. This is going to be very helpful to serve your meal. This is a large ladle. What I'm going to suggest is that you want to avoid metal utensils completely. I don't know why they still make them. Because when you have pots that have that Teflon finish, that special finish so things don't stick, spoons, if they're metal, are the, are the mortal enemy of those pots. Please try to avoid that kind of utensil. So here, this is plastic silicon, actually. It's a nice ladle. It's something to serve in, but it's also going to be something I can use as I'm cooking. In addition to that, I may need one of these. This is a slotted spoon of some sort. This is particularly made for pasta, but the slots in it make it good for just about anything. You scoop it up and the water drains out, for instance, in a another installment or two of this, I'm going to show you how to make a boiled egg. You're going to need some way to get that egg out of the pot and into the ice water. Perfect for that. But as I said, this is primarily made for pasta. Of course, when you're using a frying pan and you need to flip things over, you'll need one of these. It's a spatula. A plastic spatula, silicon spatula is going to be way better for your pots. You may have to work a little bit to make sure it's clean in between, but it's not that big a deal. Let's set that aside. When you're making things, you're going to need to be able to stir. Something, a wooden spoon is helpful, but wooden spoons actually accumulate bacteria, so I would suggest a silicon something or other. This is a silicon spatula that can be used for stirring things in a pot and wash off very nicely. And when you're peeling and cutting, you're going to need the right utensils. So let's put these out there. This is a peeler. You will use a peeler as you go through a course like this and you're making all kinds of foods almost continuously. You're going to peel sweet potatoes. You're going to peel regular potatoes. You're going to peel eggplants. You're going to peel carrots. So get yourself a decent peeler. Don't be afraid to spend five, six, seven bucks on it because it'll be your friend. I said on the webpage, I spent most of my childhood peeling potatoes. This is my friend. These are just two knives. You can get by with just two knives in your kitchen. It'd be great to have one of those Sonoma Williams sets of 24 knives and big old meat cleaver and everything else. But really, you can get by with a very sharp straight edge knife and a very good serrated knife. The serrated knife has the little bumps on it. That's what you use to cut bread. It also is wonderful for cutting tomatoes and such soft vegetables as that. This will be used for cutting any kinds of meats you have and for the tougher vegetables like potatoes or carrots and that sort of thing. So if you just get yourself one very, very good sharp knife and one very, very good serrated edge knife, you're good to go. So what do you think? Are you set up? Do you think that you can handle this kitchen? I think the whole setup that you got in front of you, if you had to start from scratch, would probably be less than 120 bucks. And I'm telling you that most of you have birthdays.